All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Brad Sugars, who is in a probably even sunnier and hotter Las Vegas right now. <laughs> uh, probably sunnier, definitely. About the same heat, I would imagine, just not the humidity you guys get. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, and Brad is the chairman and founder of Action Coach, uh, and he's been you've been running this since your early twenties. You started this business, and now you have uh, yeah. coaches all over the world, franchised, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are we? We're in uh, eighty three countries now, just over eleven hundred offices. Uh, so we we'll be thirty years old next year. So that'll be a wow. milestone nice. and a half. Yeah. So, um, so let's, uh, let's go right into it, um, Brad. Uh, so number one, let's, let's talk about the, the importance of coaching, because I still think mm -hmm. that uh, in business, let me put it another way, right? We're great in our private lives, our personal lives, right? If we've got a hobby, we'll invest tons of money in, in a coach or a trainer or an expert or whatever. But when it comes to our professional life and the thing that puts bread on the table, um, you know, we'll either sit around and wait for the company to do it for us, or we just won't, we'll go, oh yeah, yeah. well maybe someday, but that's, you know, I don't have money for that right now, but you certainly find money for other things. So when you, when you talk to people, how do you help them understand the importance of coaching and not just coaching, but investing in yourself? Yeah. Look, I mean, people spend more money on their kids coaching than they do their own. And that's kind of mm -hmm. a bit of a, a sad state of affairs, especially when you, think to the level of success and you know when you're in sales you're an individual performer but so is a tennis player or a golf player you mm -hmm. know when you're in a team scenario like you're a business owner and you're running the entire team well it doesn't matter if you're captain of the team you still have a coach you know the <clears throat> the days of the player coach are long gone from when uh, mm -hmm. sports wasn't professional to where now it is I think when we sit back and look at it, there's three real reasons that I find coaching works, John, and that number one is the accountability. There's no two ways yeah. about it. You can't hold yourself accountable, and anyone who thinks they can is kidding themselves. <laughs> you know, unless, unless you may be that David Goggins fellow who wrote that book, You Can't <laughs> Hurt Me, and you know, maybe he's the only one in the world that can do that. But then again, he was training to get into the highest level of the military, so he had a level mm. of accountability coming there. I think the second thing is, from a coaching perspective, you can't see the forest for the trees. You know, I, I just actually uh, had two of my salespeople last month and I said, I want you to record your next two uh, sales presentations. I want, to, I want to listen to them. And of course, they listened to them themselves and said, boss, I don't right. need to send it to you. I found it. And I said, that's great. Good. Uh, once you've fixed it and done it properly, then send me the next one because I'd still like to listen to it. You know, that, that outside perspective in any area of business, any area of life, like you can't watch yourself hit the ball in tennis, but someone mm -hmm. else can watch and see what you're doing and how you're doing. And the same is true for sales or business. You know, the, the old truth of sales doesn't get easier, you got to get better at sales, or business doesn't get easier, you got to get better at business is still true today as well as true or more true than it, than it ever has been before. Mm -hmm. But the third thing I, I think why coaching works, especially if you've got a good coach, is that usually they have a systemic methodology that works. I know when gee, we were about 13 years old as a company, I wrote the book, The Business Coach, mm -hmm. and we wrote down our systemic methodology of growing businesses. Now, we'd already done 13,500 companies through our program, and if you think about how many people have had the ability to go through the growth of 13 and a half thousand companies mm -hmm. and then define what does that look like? It would be either none or very, very few. And nowadays that we work with about 18,000 business owners around the world every, every week in our coaching programs, our high level coaching programs and hundreds of thousands in our group programs, we see those trends. And so if you're going to bake a cake, you want to follow the recipe of a chef that's done it before sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The same is true for business or sales or marketing or any area of it. If you're not, if you don't have someone that has a systemic methodology for you to follow, then it, it, you're like the salesperson that got uh, magically promoted to sales manager and you're not <laughs> sure why no, no one's responding to you type thing. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's always that's always a great one. Like, make your best salesperson your sales manager, and the, but don't train them. Don't actually, don't even <laughs> like figure out if they're if they have the right characteristics for the job, or they would be better off just yeah. bringing in the cash. But one of the things you mentioned there, and I think it's and I think it's really important for people because sometimes they'll say, "Oh well, you know, I I I bounce things off my you know my family, or I bounce things mm. off my buddy, or whatever." And you go, "Well, that's great," and and all of that however um those people still come with their biases they don't maybe have this greatest perspective the thing about working with a coach mm. is they're 100 percent invested in you and your success and they're not bringing anything they're not bringing any 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 per perceptions about you to the table they're actually you know working with you on a day uh, you know on a on an ongoing basis but i think that's an important distinction because sometimes people think well, I do. I, I do get some mentoring. Like I talk to my buddy occasionally. Yeah. Look, and if you're going to train for the Olympics, your buddy is good too, right? <laughs> if, if you're serious about business or serious about sales, you're not training to be better than the worst guy in your team. Mm -hmm. You're training to be at the Olympics of sales, the Olympics of business. You want to be an Olympic business person? Then, you know, I, I sit with people all the time, John, and I ask them the question, well, what was your personal best and great? How are you going to beat that? Because when you think of it as a sporting analogy, all they try and do is beat their personal best. Yeah. When you think of it as a sales analogy, all they try and do is beat their average. You know, mm. and that, that's not the way to do it. You want high performance. You need a coach. And the coach will also make you do things that you don't want to do. I mean, that's I remember a buddy of mine who was training for the Olympics weightlifting. And his coach, he got a new coach who uh, he's Australian and he got the new coach come in from Russia. And the coach's first question was, well, what do you hate about weightlifting? He said, squats. He said, good. Until you learn to love squats, you will never make the Olympics. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you, you meet the salesperson who hates the telephone or, mm -hmm. you know, hates doing the number of dials or hates doing the, the door knocking or hates networking or hates something. And it's like, no, until you learn to love that, don't expect to be good. And, we don't all have to do that, but here's, here's the distinction for most salespeople or most business people. It's not about one idea that'll create a hundred percent difference. It's about a hundred very small ideas that'll create one percent difference and coagulate all of that together, and you end up with a massive difference for the person. So, you know, I, I think that it's pretty easy to fall into the trap of not wanting the pressure of a coach. Like mm -hmm. if I I was listening to a story recently about a doctor who got a coach, and this was actually a surgeon who got a coach. Mm -hmm. And he said for the first three weeks, he hated every minute of it. He would walk out thinking, gee, I did a good job there. And mm -hmm. his coach, who was an ex-surgeon who retired, he sat down with him and showed him 30 things he did wrong. Like every single session, <laughs> he said, you know, by the way, did you notice this? Did you notice that? Did you notice this little thing? And he had all of these notes for him. Getting a coach, John, is is really saying to myself, I want to put myself under the pressure of being a high performer. I yeah. want to be a number one. I don't want to be a number two or a number three. I want to be a number one. And if I want that, then that's what I go for. And unfortunately, a lot of people in business are happy with the goal of just pay the bills. And if that's your goal, then please don't go get a coach because you'll annoy the coach, they'll annoy you and you'll end up hating each other, you know. <laughs> but if you want to be a high performer in business, then yes. And I think one other thing that I've seen change over the years, when we first started coaching 30 years ago, people were like, well, what's that? Is it like mm -hmm. consulting? Yes, yes, it's like yeah. that. And then gradually people started to see what coaching was. And then there was a period where people said, oh, look, they're failing, they should get a coach. And mm -hmm. it was like, you know, even corporations would hire a coach for an executive just so that, you know, oh, they we fired them, yes, but we got them a coach and they still didn't <laughs> perform, you know. And then, but then if you flip that right through to today where it's, you know, I was chatting with a gentleman the other day and he's a fairly high performer and he said, you know, I'm not really sure I need a coach. I said, that's fantastic. Give me the name and phone number of your biggest competitor. Mm -hmm. Oh, said, yeah. Well, four. Well, four. I said, you know what, four? He said, well, why would you? No, I'm not giving you their name. I said, I'm going to go and coach your biggest competitor instead of you. So that's fine. You don't need a coach. He goes, well, yeah. okay, now that you put it that way, 
You know, and so it's it's really sitting down and thinking of it. It is an unfair and competitive advantage. It really is. And if you look at the highest performers on the planet, they have coaches in any genre, be it an actor, be it a sports person. Yeah. It doesn't matter where they have a coach. So yeah. Yeah, it's 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 amazing how it, you can give all those other you know all those other jobs and things where people have to have coaches and yet, you know, the one that's supposed to be, the, you know, the tip of the spear, the one interacting with your process, interacting <laughs> with the market, the one who's really representing you, uh, is kind of winging it, you know, or basing you know somebody wing it really well and some some don't. Uh, but how much does when when you start to to work with people, how much does self awareness play into this? Because I I really do feel that self awareness mm -hmm. is the great uh, doorway to success, or at least the opening. You know, it's it's to get in the gate on your journey to success. I think or get through the gate. Self awareness is critical. Look, you know, when you take on a coach, sometimes because there's an ego play with taking on a coach. Sure. You know, there is a, a, a both a negative and a positive ego. One is the positive of, hey, look how successful I am. I've got my own coach. Mm -hmm. So that's one side of the equation. The negative side of it is people think, well, you know, do, it, does taking a coach mean I admit I don't know what I'm doing or I don't know everything about what I'm doing? And I don't know, let's go and ask Serena Williams if she thinks having a coach is a bad idea. I mean, th th this is the craziness of it. Self-awareness is, I guess, the... Let me go back a few steps. Yep. 16 years of age, I went to a seminar with Jim Rohn, E. James Rohn. And Mr. Rohn said, you know, never wish your life were easier, wish that you were better. And he backed it up with a second statement of work harder on yourself than you do on your job. When, when someone of his caliber sort of says those things to you, you have to take it on board because you have to know that, okay, for me to achieve my goals, I have to grow. The reason mm -hmm. I have to grow is because if I could have achieved those goals as I am today, I would have already achieved those goals. And I think it's, it's, it's kind of been unfair the way people have taught goal setting in the past because they've forgotten the fact that, and, and my formula for it is relatively simple, it's dream, goal, learn, plan, act. So mm -hmm. first have the big dreams, then turn it into goals. Goals have got to be turned into a learning plan because I don't care what goal you set. It determines, it, it means you have to learn. You might want to double your business. Great. You've got to read a bunch of books on how to double your business or go to a seminar or get a mentor or get a coach who can help you double your business. If it's running a marathon, great. You've still got to go and train. You've got to go and get a coach. You've got to join. You've got to do a plan and all of that sort of thing. And so I think a lot of what self-awareness is in this scenario is the ability to recognize the fact that you must grow mm -hmm. and recognize and just be okay with that. You know, be okay with the fact that I need to grow if I am to achieve these things. I remember when Mr. Rohn said to me, I was 16 years of age, I ran down to him at the end of the seminar and got him to sign my notes. When I was 31, I actually mm -hmm. stood on stage mm -hmm. as the opening act for Mr. Rohn. Uh, mm -hmm. So 15 years later. And uh, I said to him, Mr. Ryan, what's one thing I can do to guarantee myself success as a young man? He said, it's pretty simple, young man. All you have to do is read a book a week for the rest of your life. Yeah. Now, the learning work, and this goes back to your point around self-awareness, yeah. the learning work and the growing work is the hardest work. The learning work is harder than any other form of work there is. That reading, that knowledge acquisition, that growth of self, that is the hardest work but you grow into the person that that goal becomes a reality for. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's fascinating. And I, I also think that I wanted to come back on one of the other things that you mentioned a few moments ago, and that's it. And that's that it's lots of little things coming together that you know, move the ball forward, if you like. And, and I think that's also kind of a struggle we have in today's, so, you know, to, to the culture we live in today, this instant self, you know, instant gratification, all of that, you know, mm. people are being promised like dramatic silver bullets all the time. There's probably, I'm sure there's coaches out there say, take my three week coaching course and everything will be good and you'll be perfect. And all that. <laughs> the Instagram um, ad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of that. Um, so I think that's obviously one of the things that where people have to realize is that it is hard. It is, it's, it's hard work, but it's doing lots of, as you said, it's lots Lots of little things coming together and you know that in sales and marketing and everything you can rarely point to one
one dramatic thing. You can point to a lot of things that you did over time that maybe even didn't show results immediately. Um, but it's the it's the composite or the combination over time that starts to to move the needle. You know, when when you're in business for yourself or when you're in sales, you're basically in business for yourself ultimately. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware of the fact that goals only happen by measurement and management. And my definition of management, by the way, is creating competent, productive people. So if I'm a sales manager, my job is to cre create competency and productivity. If there's a lack of competency, a lack of productivity, that's my, my problem as the manager. Leadership, on the other hand, is about passion and focus. Now, in a, in a great successful organization, you have two. You have great management, you have great leadership. Uh, in, uh, now, I, I own 11 companies and my CEOs for all my companies are uh, great at what they do but there has to be that balancing act. For me in my main company, uh, I am the CEO, but all I do is leadership. My chief of staff does all of the management stuff because mm -hmm. it's not my, not my thing. Now, what we look at then is how do those small things happen? How do the small parts get executed? And I talked about dream, goal, learn, plan. Mm -hmm. Execution really comes down to three main things, great management, great planning, and great measurement. You know, without measurement, nothing changes. And this is where a lot of salespeople fall down. They measure too few things. Like, how many referrals did you get this week? What was the number? And mm -hmm. most salespeople can't tell them. Yeah. You know, how, what is your best week of referrals? Like how many referrals do you get on your personal best week? And most people can't tell me. I'm a very uh, granular goal setter and a granular manager of, of details because I find it's in the details. See, when we mm -hmm. watch sport, we never get surprised in sport that they have all the statistics right there. They have every statistic needed to be able to get the results. In business, I find too few people are uh, doing the work that needs to be done. Their systemization is not there, therefore their execution isn't there. Their planning is not there, therefore their execution isn't there. I had a gentleman the other day who said to me, Brad, I don't understand why my people, they sort of, you know, one week they're doing great, the next week they're very average. It's like they're, they're inconsistent. Mm -hmm. I said, well, show me the checklist that they follow. He said, what do you mean the checklist that they follow? Well, where's the checklist that they have to follow to do their job? So, you know, when you get on an aeroplane, the pilot follows a checklist, right? And, mm -hmm. and he's like, well, oh, I don't think we have checklists. I said, well, there's your inconsistency. Like, how often, I mean, here's a question for you, John, that's funny and blunt. How often do you want your pilot to follow the checklist? Oh, 150% of the time? Yeah, yeah, like every <laughs> single time. I would like my pilot to be successful at his job or her job every <laughs> single time. That's In fact, I'd like, him, I'd like him to check it more than once. Yeah. <laughs> But this is where, when we look at consistency, and that's why that, that outsider looking in, and that's what a manager can often be seen as a coach or mentor to their team members. You know, that's, that's a big part of it. So I think learning the skills of coaching, not just being coached, mm -hmm. is, a, is an important aspect for business people and managers and leaders. Yeah, I know. I couldn't agree more. And I think that's, that's another critical point is that, uh, people aren't people aren't born natural coaches, generally mm. speaking, and and also a lot of people's coaching experience, their experience of being coached maybe comes from school or college or from sports mm. or whatever. So they they think, oh, coaching is like shouting from the sideline. You're going, no, that's not coaching enough. So I think the I think the other thing is is teaching people how how to coach is critical because I really do think that there's very it's one of it's one of the skills that's severely mm. lacking because not enough people are trained in how to be a coach. Yeah, look, when we look at coaching, the number one skill we have to teach someone is questioning, how mm. to be a questioner, because that's what coaching is. You know, you don't want to you don't want to be telling all the time. You want to be questioning because if you tell them the answer, if one of your staff comes to you and you're in that position called you know, I, I love the old management axiom of my door is always open, possibly the <laughs> stupidest, dumbest thing ever invented in management. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone comes to you with a challenge and you answer it, then you're building a rod in your own back. You're, crea you're taking on the monkey, as the book used to say. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you've got to learn to answer questions with a question. But 
even a simple one. Let me teach you the dumbest management question of all time. Why isn't this done? <laughs> now, let's use kids as an example first. You go home, your kid hasn't done their homework. Kid, why haven't you done your homework? What's the answer 100% of the time? It's an excuse of some sort. Yeah, they're going to sure. excuse, they're going to give a reason, or they're going to blame somebody. Well, you know, they said I had to do this. or this. Mm -hmm. The same happens in business all day, every day. The same happens in sales all day, every day. People don't learn how to ask great questions, and therefore they lead the prospect to something, or they lead the business person, or they lead their team member to something that they don't want. Who should have got this done? Who should have got this done leads them to blame. If I want my people to move forward, then I need to ask forward moving questions. Mm -hmm. Not why didn't this get done, but what has to happen in order for this to get out to the customer? You know, that forward moving question is one of the key coaching questions that we use. Now, ultimately, yes, will we need to address the fact that they messed up and something didn't happen? Sure. Yes, we will need to. And we will need to work out if it's a systems problem, a training problem, or a human problem. You know, in most cases, you'll find it's either a systems or a training problem. They haven't been trained properly. They don't know what they're doing. And you say, well, they've done the training. Well, how effective was the training if they've done it and they're still not performing? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. those are some of the questions that, again, as a, as a leader or as a coach or as a mentor in an organization, you have to be blunt with yourself, not just blunt with the people. Yeah, no, and I love it, and I love the I love the the question, and I love that idea of like getting to you know why isn't it done rather than you know let's go, um, you know let's waste our time right now doing forensics <laughs> on this as opposed to actually moving forward and coming back later and you know and by moving forward you may actually discover the answer to why it wasn't done in the first place anyway. Correct. Yeah. Listen, Brad, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Brad's information will be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. You know, Action Coach, we started it 30 years ago or 29 years ago, 30th birthday next year. We, we just love helping business people grow their business, whether you're in sales, whether you're in marketing, whatever area you're in, come work with us. We'll we offer both education and coaching. And I think it's important to not just have education and not just have coaching. I think the combination mm -hmm. of the two is of vital importance. But you know, when I see a business person struggling, it, it drives me insane because it's just there's a lack of knowledge for that person. And if they knew how to do it, they would be doing it. And that's really where we try and fit that gap. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I would encourage people go check out actioncoach.com. Go, uh, go, go just find out about coaching, go do a little bit of research, understand what it is and understand how it could help you. Because let's face it, you know, life and work is too hard to do this stuff on your own. You might as well go find go find somebody to help you. All right, well, listen, thanks again, Brad. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.